Test, test, test. Oh, that sounds better. I thought I was quiet. What's up, Rockin' Chocobo? Can you hear me good? That's good. Um, please let me know as we go if that changes, if the game is too quiet. We are here to showcase the English dub today, so I do want it to be audible. Playing more Final Fantasy. Shocking. Addicted to 14. Reach level 50 for my monk. What are the monks like? Do they punch and kick? I played as monks in Dragon Force when I played through that last year. The game was so satisfying. If the, if the 14 monks are half as satisfying as the Dragon Force monks, I get it. Super Retro Heart, what's up, dude? Good to see you in here. One of these days I'll have to teach you about side chain ducking. Is this a FF14 thing or is this a something else? I don't even like I know the components of those words, but I don't know what that means. This is an audio for stream saying, "Oh man, I I need to Oh, is that where you like have a side thing that you can test so you're not testing on the air?" Because that I could use. I feel like back in the Capcom days, we just had a test channel. But that feels so wasteful. Let's see. I'm try I fancied up my stream a little bit today. Um, you can't see much of it. I, I have like a streaming imminent splash screen now. But I also threw in this uh, chat box. Let's see how it looks. But yeah. I would love to learn from you because I don't know a lot. Audio ducking is lowering the volume of something else when you speak or when there's other audio. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, I, the Elgato pack-in software, which is not great for streaming, but it had, it had a setting where you, it would automatically lower stuff. Um, yeah, maybe something to look into eventually. You know, it's funny, I made that splash screen, but now I'm realizing the attract mode of this game is really good. And it's showing off some of the other characters that we've implemented in English, including this one, Metical Flair. Played by Dark Misty, who did a fantastic job. She was the first actor we recorded and uh, uh, helped us solidify our process. Was just consummate professional and uh, made it work across the pond. But today, we're mainly here. Yes, Rock and Chocobo, this is a Saturn game. This is called Bulk Slash. Uh, yeah, so to catch you up, um, me and a handful of other guys uh, who met over on uh, this Discord server uh, called Sega Saturn Shiro. It's a Saturn community. Uh, we're doing a fan localization of the game with a complete redub of the, of the voiceover because there's a lot of voiceover in this game. And we've been gradually... So the game has, uh, it's an action game and you have these navigators that ride alongside you and give you real-time directions and they react to the action. And you can pick one from set, a list of seven and they each have their own set of VO. Uh, so we've been implementing those navigators one by one and then showcasing each one. Uh, first with the Sega Saturn Shiro channel which is on YouTube and then on my own channel right here. Uh, and this is so this is the third navigator that we're showcasing we've actually already implemented a fourth and fifth just in the last week or so and we've recorded a sixth that leaves just one left to record and that's coming up but we are aiming to have this whole thing out the door by like late September and yeah yeah this was a Japan only release it was 1997 so eh, getting kind of late in the Saturn's life uh, but the, the, that's good because that means that they had figured out how to do some cool stuff with the Saturn. And I, one of the reasons I love this game so much is I feel like it's possibly the number one best show, like showpiece for the Saturn's 3D. There were not a lot of great showpieces for 3D on the Saturn, but this one, I feel like it achieved a pretty good aesthetic. Um, 
and it like I, I feel like they were just very understanding of the strengths and weaknesses of the system uh, so let's go ahead and get into it uh, so today we're looking at Leone Rhodes who is uh, sort of the flagship navigator of the game she's the first one you get um, so you're likely to play through the game with her first but first take a look at the settings we have the voice the sound voice test let's get um all right let's raise hail now you have to unlock these by beating the game with the corresponding navigator so oh right now what we're gosh, hearing yeah. is rupia rude who's Speaking played by my uh friend diana alaco got it all set and then i think we also probably have medical flair actually i don't know Nope, we don't. We just have, and that's uh, partly because I lost my save data because my Saturn battery died, which is a just a common hazard of the Sega Saturn. Uh, the batteries die. Um, okay, well, there's not much to show here right now then, but um, yeah, it's okay. I, I will build that save data back up. I've I've cleared this game probably like 20 some times by now just for uh, the sake of testing and stuff. Uh, just to recap some of this other work we've done on this game, um, there's a lot of spelling errors for English stuff that was already in the game, in the Japanese version of the game, like navigator select, the, the word navigator was spelled ER at the end, uh, Danthrax who is one of the members of our team, uh, painstakingly hand-edited that graphic to fix the spelling. And then all these, like, this metadata about the co the uh, navigator, uh, they were full of spelling incons inconsistencies and things like that. Um, so we cleaned those up. Uh, there was a lot of graphic work on Danthrax's part. Um, Just speaking of Danthrax, I'm gonna mention this in the Discord right quick. But um, okay, I might as well start as Rupia, although I'm gonna get Leone in like second. Um, but you might, I might as well show a little bit of Rupia. This is who we showed on the stream last time. Uh, so I've already done a full playthrough of her. If, you, if you're curious, you can look through my uh, my highlights here on Twitch, uh, and it's in there somewhere. I look for full playthrough. And there's another one with Medical Flair, who's the, the British uh, princess character. What's up, Axton? Oh, good to see you in here. All right, before I pick up Leone, I'll, I'll show you some of Rupia's lines, just to recap. So you can see that you have, you have targets and... Uh, your uh, navigator will give you real-time direction. You can also transform. That's sort of one of the main, uh, like sh that's sort of the main shtick of the game. Is you're you're a transformer. If you tr try to walk on water, they yell at you. Um. Anyway, let's go ahead and. Oh wait, what have I done? I've. I need to reorient myself. Shoot! Where'd you go? Leone, come back! If I can't find her, I might have to reset. <laughs> I wonder if they disappear after a minute. Oh no, here she is. Yeah, I didn't think they disappeared. Okay, let me shut up. Leone Road, Sergeant First Class Reporting. I'm here to help, Chris. Yeah. Launching operation. Straight ahead. All right. So, here, real quick, let's get a fire blaster. Fire blaster. So, Leone Rhodes uh, is voiced by the illustrious Edo Bean, who you may you may recognize her voice from Games Done Quick. She does a lot of uh, emceeing uh, the speedrun streams, and in particular, uh, her friend Aquas has uh, some of the world records for bulk slash speedruns. So she already actually knew this game and is one of the uh, few actors in, in this dub who, who who came to us without any 
uh, personal connection to anyone on the team. Uh, we have Burnt Ends, who is sort of acting as our community manager, and he's helped a lot with uh, hooking us up with a lot of these actors. Uh, Edobean found us, uh, I think, via Twitter, and uh, sent in an audition, I, I think through email. We, we talked about this on the, the Saturn Road show just last Friday, but... um. Yeah, and uh, we, we took our sweet time casting Leone because she's so important to the whole experience. You just see her so much, and I, it's one of those things where it's like, you have to put in quite a bit of effort to unlock the other navigators, and, and they're all a little hidden in the game except Leone. Um, so the vast majority of people who play the game, I mean, maybe not now because it, basically we only have hardcore fans left, but um, we kind of had in our heads that the majority of players are going to be playing through the game with Leone. Uh, and it's at least going to be the game's first impression, because she's the first navigator you get. So we wanted it to be just right. Um, it's also, you know, she's, she's sort of the... Um, not in a negative way, but she's sort of the vanilla character. She's the one who sets the template for what like what the normal navigator is supposed to be like and uh, so she's very by the book uh, but there, uh, there's a little bit of nuance there to her character because she's not totally by the book she's got a humanity about her and, and and there's like little touches to her character that we wanted to make sure came out what's up Spahn? Spahn? you don't ha so you don't have to use Leone on your first playthrough here's how it works you find each navigator in their corresponding stage. There are seven navigators, seven stages, and every stage has and they they take they look like power ups. Like you have health power ups, weapons. Like here's a health one, and then you have the navigators, and they're labeled with the letters M I S S, which is an acronym for what the navigators are called. Um, but uh, so you pick up that navigator's power up, and then you can choose to bring them aboard right away or not. And if you choose to bring them aboard, then you have Im you immediately get them as your navigator for that playthrough. However, you do not permanently unlock them unless you clear the game with them. So I have Leone now. If in stage two I pick up Lyra Hart, who's one of the other navigators and choose to switch to her, I don't get to keep Leone. I have to play through the game again and keep Leone and beat the game. So you only you can only unlock one navigator per playthrough. But I can switch away from Leone on any subsequent stage after this one. I'm not going to today because the purpose of the stream is to showcase Leone, but that's how it works. Um, and so that does mean you're, you're, if you want to unlock all the navigators, you're looking at at least seven playthroughs. However, once you get decent at the game, a playthrough takes like an hour. I don't know what Aquas' speedrun is, but it's way less than an hour, I'm sure. Um... So let me think. Yeah, and then there's other things. So, like, the navigators, as you use them, uh, they actually level up over time, and uh, then their their dialogue changes, and they get better at navigating you. They give you more precise directions. Um, so, there's a little bit of a dating sim component to it. I think this was around the time dating sims were getting really big in Japan. Uh, so it's sort of like, it's an action game with light dating sim elements. Uh, whoa! And you're supposed to like, you know, uh, build your relationship with the navigator that you like. And, it, and if you want, you can do that with every single navigator. Uh, but progress only saves when you clear the game. So even if I level up Leone in stage 3, uh, I don't permanently get her leveled up version until I beat the game. Can you date the robot? <laughs> I mean, I feel like essentially that's what's happening here. Um, Please select the stage. 
there you can choose to only to, to fly solo uh, if you don't want one of the navigators aboard you can do that at the start of the game uh, and there's a unique I think there's a unique uh, you get like a uh, unlockable key art for each of the navigators when you beat it with them and there's a, I think there's a unique piece of art if you beat the game with no navigator so here you can see the mission briefing. These have all been translated, of course. Um, it's just kind of for flavor most of the time. But uh, So the way it works is he gives you a brief description of what the mission is and then a, a little hint about the navigator in that stage. And then when you get the navigator on subsequent playthroughs, that hint is gone because the game understands that you already have that navigator. Kind of a cool detail. Um... There are a couple missions that are, I mean, most of the missions in the game are blow up all the things labeled target. So even if you can't read the briefings, you're probably going to get through the game. But there are a couple missions that are a little bit more complicated, where it's like, there's one where you have to bring bombs to a certain location. Whoa. Uh, there's another one that's an escort mission. So having those briefings, you know, it's nice. It makes it a little easier to understand what's going on. We've talked about this before, but this is not a hard game to play if you don't understand Japanese. But uh, we just thought there's so much charm in, 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 the, in the language, and that's a big part. <laughs> the charm is a big part of this game's charm, so... <laughs> it, just want you know, and this is my favorite Saturn game, so I thought uh, it would be nice to bring the full experience to the people, to the masses. Double charm. Oh yeah! So, secret to getting good at this game is learning how to chain. You got this. Uh, You'll notice I have a charging meter below my... So right now it's below the napalm meter. Um, that charges automatically anytime you're not shooting. And uh, when it's fully charged, you launch a... You lob a bomb, and it has a big uh, area of effect. And now you'll, you'll notice that it starts flashing before it's fully charged, like there. And if you do that, you, you can still lob the bomb, but you get a tiny AoE. Um, so, but the idea is anything that gets blown up by the AoE uh, starts a chain reaction because then that thing blows up and has an AoE. So you want to like lob a big bomb into a big cluster of enemies and try and blow them all up in one chain. Uh, the navigators love it. Uh, fascists hate it. Because <laughs> that's who you're fighting in this game. Uh, and uh, you and you uh, you get a lot of points that way. Um, so the thing about leveling up the navigators is that they each have a secret criterion that makes them level up quicker. Uh, and some of them really like the chain combos. Uh, some of them prefer you to use one mode over, over the other of your mech. Fascists hate everything. Yeah. More or less. Except fascism. And singing in groups, maybe? I don't know. I think this level is the coolest looking and probably has the coolest looking boss. Whoa! I mean, it feels so big. I just think they did such a great job making this feel exciting and like it, like fast and exhilarating you're zipping around you know buzzing right by these giant freaky mechs launching salvos of missiles and lots of near misses and direct hits uh, faked transparencies it's a beautiful thing so. What's up, Sestrin RKD? I need to check out the soundtrack. You know, it's all up on YouTube. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't contain the tracks for the ending FMVs, which was exactly what we needed to re-encode the ending FMVs. So that's been this big ordeal. We actually had to get someone to 
cover the songs. Uh, we we lucked out big time. Uh, Jiggle eighty five. I'm gonna shout out right now because he's on he's on Twitch and he streams exclusively Saturn. Games. That work? Yeah, it works. Check out Jiggle eighty five sometime. He and his brother have graciously offered, at no cost, to re-record, cover and record all of the m music for the FMVs, which will allow us to dub the FMVs and re-encode them with the dubbed voiceover. This was a huge issue that we had no idea how to overcome. We th or initially we were like, well, we just can't do it. So the FMVs are going to be this glaring omission from the localization but uh they really bailed us out uh and the music i mean it's spot on these guys are fantastic professional quality musicians i mean i think they are at least one of them is a professional musician uh so that makes good sense real quick before i do this escort mission i'm gonna make a beeline for the castle here and show you what I meant about picking up the navigator in action. See this miss icon? This is one of the other navigators who we've dubbed. How do you do? I am Medical Flare. Might I trouble you to tag along? Now in this case I'm gonna say no, just because I want to stick with Leone. But that was Medical Flare, she's voiced by Dark Misty, um, who I was talking about before but just a total professional was our first actor and just like knocked it out of the park she was one of the easiest people to cast because she just did such a great job in the audition uh, and really made the process smooth and helped us figure out what we were doing with all the other actors so um, props to Dark Misty she's on YouTube she has an ASMR channel uh, be sure to check her out. Um, and yeah, same deal. There, we did a playthrough of medical earlier, so uh, you can look for that on my channel. It's one of the highlights. Now, escort missions. Not anyone's favorite usually. Uh, this one, you know, you just kind of have to memorize the route and then it's not so bad. Uh, and the main thing with this mission is to be proactive about taking out turrets because those are the things that do most of the damage. Maybe all the damage. These guys right here. I'm really impressed with how many people came together for this localization. A lot of prop stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a real miracle of, uh, you know, uh, online community and what that can do. Um, you know, it's funny. So yesterday, I think, was the 10th anniversary uh, of the cancellation of Mega Man Legends 3. Uh, just to dig into my own past a little here. Um I was the community manager for that game. I don't, if you're not familiar, this was a this was a a project that leveraged community input heavily. Uh, we did these um, monthly contests. We had a for like a community website with a big forum. And we did these monthly contests, recruiting ideas from the fans to implement in the final game. Uh, and it was, some of them were pretty significant, you know, like design a boss, write dialogue for an NPC, uh, design a sidekick character. So uh, it was exciting, especially because it was like this fan darling that was like, uh, I mean, kind of like Bulk Slash, sort of a hidden gem. Uh, and people had been waiting for a new Mega Man Legends for, over, for like 10 years. Uh, and then the game got canceled. And... It was this huge fumble, it was terrible. It was terrible to be a part of that. Um, or to have to deliver that news. Um, uh, because I felt like we were trying to prove uh, that, like it was this whole experiment. This was early on in Capcom's experiment with the whole community thing. And we were all very passionate about it and really believed that it would improve 
uh, you know, basically everything about the company and their products. Uh, but it kind of blew up in our face. Uh, but I still think that the idea had merit. And I feel like this project almost, to me personally, and maybe not to anyone on the like on the outside looking in, uh, it it feels sort of like a personal redemption for me to be part of something that is completely community sourced with no profit or uh, like there's nothing to be gained other than this. Thing existing and getting out to more people to enjoy um, and it's completely the result of passionate fans coming together so uh, I think it's like on a personal note I think it's been very healing for me <laughs> uh, but yeah it, it does feel pretty miraculous that so many people came to bed together so quickly for what I always thought was like th this totally obscure thing like I, I never met anyone who knew what bulk slash was even other Saturn fans they're like what what straight ahead target set remaining three targets straight ahead straight ahead so how would we play this game is it only on Saturn yes yeah, so when when the patch is released. We will have a, a thorough launch day blog that will have Straight details ahead. on how you would access and p play this thing in the first Straight place. Ahead. Uh, let me think. So, oh, wow. so there's a ca there's a, a person named who goes by the, the moniker Knight of Dragon, Knight with a K, uh, and he is sort of the. Uh, he seems to be a sort of. Uh, tech guru, godfather of this fan translation community, and especially Saturn. Uh, I don't know the full list of things that he's uh, been a part of. I know that th so the Saturn version of Symphony of the Night, the Castlevania game, uh, recently got an English patch, and that was he he was helming that. Uh, but uh, he created a tool called the Saturn Patcher, or something to that effect. Ahead. Which you can use to patch Saturn games. Ahead. Um, and you would download that tool. Nearing it's a free target. utility. Set. Man, I'm fast. <laughs> I'm getting very fast at this. And so you need, you need the game. Uh, and, you know... It's up to you how you obtain the game. You need the game. You need an image of the game, and if you have a disc, you can rip it, which is what I've done. Um, but uh, then you would you you take that image file and uh, open it with the patcher, and then there's a patch file which we will release, and you will apply the patch using that patch tool that Knight of Dragon created. Um, so you know we'll have a step by step. It shouldn't be too hard. It's it's like click a few buttons and that's basically it. And then and then to actually play it, so you could either e use an em uh, Saturn emulator and play it on a PC, or um, there's a variety of ways to play patched games on an actual Saturn. I'm actually playing this on a disc on my Saturn right now, um, using uh, there's something called Pseudo Saturn Kai, which is a basically like a thing that hacks your Saturn to let it do certain things, including play burn discs. Um, and you can get this on a cartridge. I got my cartridge on eBay for like 50 bucks or something. Um, if you can get it on a pro action replay cartridge. Uh, the, the other way to do it, which I think has become the more popular way, is uh, it, you can get something called an ODE which allows you to, it's a device that you install in your Saturn that lets you uh, load games off an SD card. Uh, and so if you have an ODE, uh, you can just throw the patched version of the game on an SD card and play it off that. Um, so there's a bunch of ways, we'll outline them all. Pretty wild backstory behind this. I have the hardest time finding people who share a passion for things and want to make something happen. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that it, it was it was a lucky draw. 
Um, doesn't always go so easy. What's up, Illimon? Thanks for that follow. You like Killer7? I'll pay for a copy of this. Yeah, but we don't... We, Please select the stage. we don't want any money to be involved in this. I think it's possibly only a matter of time before someone who does repros does a repro of this. Um, and that's a, you know, that's a sort of polarizing debate. We, we just wanted to not step into that murky legal territory. Um, we certainly didn't want to profit off this. Uh, other than the, the profit of, the, 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 the emotional profit of a thing that you like being out in the world and enjoyable to more people. Um... But yeah, there. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, the the, the reality of uh, retro gaming now is that uh, getting authentic copies of games is often prohibitively expensive, and Bulk Slash has gotten to that point. To be honest, um, for many people, I think it's it's a hard sell. It, it, I I think I got this copy back in like 2008 for about. 50 bucks, but it was incomplete. There's no manual for this copy, and it's the Satakore version, which is like the greatest hits version. It's like a little uglier. <laughs> um, so, I think it probably would have run for more like 70 back then. Now it's like 150 usually. And then, you know, it. I th personal opinion I find that it's it's uh, you eventually get to a point where you have to weigh the harm versus the benefit like is it worse to find another way to play these games uh, that doesn't cost $150 or is it worse to just not ever play these games and let them die in obscurity uh, and I, I try to think from, a, like, try and put myself in the creator's shoes, you know? They never set out to charge $150 for Bulk Slash. Uh, and I think, I want to think that they would be delighted to know that people were playing their game in 2021. Uh, a lot of these people went on to work on Mario Party games. Uh, and before Bulk Slash, uh, some of the team came from, uh, Lightning Force, or sorry, uh, Thunder Force. Uh, so, uh, this is a particularly obscure point for, for those people in their legacy, you know, they, they did a lot of stuff before and after this that's much more well known. Uh, one of the other obscurities is, uh, Gingaf K Densetsu Sapphire, which is the uh, it's a top-down shmup for the uh, PC Engine CD. That has a similar vibe to this, just like I don't know, aesthetically and tonally. It doesn't play like this though. Now, games that came out that had a global release are often more affordable in Japan, but games that didn't, like Bulk Slash, ten, can be quite pricey. I was, you mentioned uh, Brave Fencer Musashi. Last time I was in Japan, I went to Hard Off. It's like a recycle shop. I found that game for 100 yen in a junk bin. The things that pass for junk at a Hard Off, preposterous. But even for you said forty bucks, that's like that's well worth the money. That's, I mean, that's that's still less than they charged for it new back in the day. It's so quiet. 
could use some emotional profit because I'm emotionally bankrupt. Oh, I'm sorry, Chocobo. I hope you get yours. Stick with that monk class. I'm just catching up on the chat here. I found a used game store recently that had sat copies of Saturn, Bomberman, Enemy Zero, and Panzer Dragoon Saga fully packaged. Those fetch a pretty penny. Okay, 500, 600, 750. Wait, that's four prices in three games. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Uh, I got really into the Saturn when I lived in Japan, but I think uh, a big part of that was that Saturn games were so inexpensive at that time uh, in Japan. I, I lived there 2007 through uh, 2010, and... Um, Okay, so the games you just listed. I, I have Enemy Zero. I got Enemy Zero for 42 yen. I still have the ta the price tag on there. That's the that's less than the price of like a stick of gum. Uh, Panzer Dragoon Saga was about 500 yen. So like less than five bucks. Uh, Saturn Bomberman, yeah, it was probably about the same, but five bucks, maybe less. And just like constantly finding c good games for like less than five bucks. Um, Bulk Slash was one of the pricier things I picked up, and it was still less than the cost of a, a modern new game for like PS2. So, it, like at the time, it was like because I was living on a budget and couldn't afford to buy a lot of modern games, you know? So I was like, oh man, I'll just like go to the rental shop and pick up a cool Saturn game for a buck every weekend. Burning Rangers at $700. Are you talking about factory sealed? Like, the, when you say packaging, you're talking about completely sealed? Because that would make sense. I mean, it's still... Now it's, a, it's at the point where... I, like, uh, I, had, I had a... There was a game store in Brooklyn I used to go to a lot, and he was like, actually, you know... Like factory sealed copies are getting to the point where they actually sell less because people feel like they don't. If it's sealed, they don't want to open it. Uh, but they're looking for the game. A lot of people are looking for a game because they want to play it, so they don't want a sealed copy. They want one that they feel like they have permission to open. <laughs> and that made sense to me because I have no interest in buying sealed copies of games either. But yeah, in general, over a hundred bucks, and it's I'm kind of so that's where I tap out. I I might pick up a complete copy of Bulk Slash at some point, but that's because this is like now the most sentimental game to me of all time. <laughs> I'm picking up a bogey. Put a lot of work these last few months into this game, <coughs> and it's been very. I mean, it's just been very uplifting in a time where I think we all, I think everyone on the team benefited a lot from that. Not to put words in anyone else's mouth, but, you know, it's just Straight like ahead. something to keep our minds occupied while the world is trying to heal and only doing a so-so job of it. But, but yeah, like, Dub aside, I'm very happy with, with the localization itself, but the game itself, like, I hope that we're also just, like, putting an, another spotlight on the game, because I, I feel like the game speaks for itself pretty well, you know, the, it's visually very striking, uh, it's, if you're an action fan, this is one of the best action experiences on the machine, if you ask me. <laughs> Bad time to look at the chat. Whoa, I'm sorry. Transforming into walker mode is a good way to hit the brakes if you gotta stop very abruptly. Ahead. 
Dang! Lucky hit there. said boom <laughs> please select the stage all right we are moving right along this, is, this might be one of my fastest playthroughs yet I mean it should be I've, I've played through this game so many times now all right I hope you guys like Hoth It's always great to work on a project and have a goal. It's a million times better when it's actually moving towards said goal. <laughs> yeah, that definitely helps. Let's see, that's what we were missing with Mega Man Legends 3. One little detail. So close. I think to speedrunners who run on original hardware might be worth it, but certainly not to me who has a collection on PC and Switch. Yeah, you know, it gets to a point where it's only worth it if you're a stickler for, like, if you're a collector, basically. If you get some inherent joy out of having an authentic thing. And I have, like, a little bit of that sometimes. I don't, I don't really understand it myself. Like, I think with the Saturn, because it was so easy to start a collection, I'm now, like into Saturn collecting and I will like it, I'm willing to invest a little more in it like I just got a big haul from Japan today uh, and it was like I, I dropped like 150 bucks but I got a stack of like 11 things including a joystick like a high quality joystick to the rear. Uh, and that's like the yeah. What is that? The price of like two and a half games, like two and a half the modern right. games, which I rarely. Right. I don't buy a lot of modern games to Any be honest. To the right. Uh, but to the rear. yeah, I'll like once in a while drop a chunk of change target. for Saturn. Also, uh, Genesis Mega Drive. Uh, but most other stuff, I'm I'm keen to just play on whatever's the most convenient and or affordable. After DLC, that's one game. Yeah, that's true. To the rear. Oh, wow. To the rear. Elimon, you taking off? All right. Well, you can always catch the VOD if you're curious. I appreciate you coming and hanging out for a while. Look forward to more Bulk Slash in the near future. We already have two characters implemented beyond this one. Uh, for a total of five, I mean. So to it's right. it's coming along. We're gonna we're gonna be done before long. To the left. Straight ahead. Nearing Game looks arcade as hell in a good way. Yeah, I mean, you know, as, as someone who grew up with the Genesis, I am a big fan of fast rear. action games. That's my favorite kind of game. Uh, I'm not very good at most the of right. them, but uh, I just love a game that's really exhilarating and. Um, this this just like it just really hits that button for me. I love zipping past these big big things and like oh. There's just lots of on screen there's like lots of dynamic on screen action. There's always all these different components. It feels like this little oh god like ecosystem, even though the draw distance is obviously not very good. It's like everywhere you go, there's like lots of different action happening on screen at once. See, you got like these things flying through the air, they just zip by you. They're not very threatening or anything, they're just kind of there for flavor.
If I saw this in an arcade cab, I would have lost it. Yeah, now this was never an arcade release. However, it's it's funny you mention that. So, while we were working on this, um, I got to thinking, uh, this game sure would be an awesome fit for my favorite Saturn peripheral, the Virtual On Twin Stick. Now, if you haven't played Virtual On, uh, it was designed to have these this double uh, like stick input, and then you use the sticks in tandem to control this mech, and it was a mech arena fighter. And they made a, a home version of the twin stick for the home version of Virtual On, uh, and it was very cool. And then um, it it registers as a normal Saturn pad, so technically you can play any Saturn game with a twin stick, but uh, the the it maps the Saturn buttons <clears throat> like kind of to weird places so most Saturn games will be a horrible fit for the twin stick uh, unless they were deliberately optimized for use with it and there's only a small handful of games besides virtual on that were optimized for uh, the twin stick and I can name them so there's the Gundam side story trilogy which is three small games uh, that basically uh, together form the the amount of content of like one normal game, uh, and they're very good. It's it's a it's a fast-paced cockpit action game in the Gundam universe. Uh, sorry, I'm looking for a mountain that has a health upgrade on it. Uh, where is that mountain? And then the other game is Gun Griffin 2, which is uh, it's like a tank action game, and that's also very good. And that's it. So you have Virtual On, the Gundam Trilogy, and then Gun Griffin 2. Um, and, but then I just couldn't get out of my head that it would be a great fit for this game. Uh, and we asked Knight of Dragon, and very quickly he implemented uh, a control layout for the twin stick, in bulk slash, so that is part of this patch. You will be able to play this game with a twin stick if you have it. Sorry, I'm still looking for this mountain. Wish you could set another point for the navigator to. Oh, here we go. This level is particularly dangerous, so it's good to know about that. It's at the highest point in the level, the top of that mountain. Edo Bean, what's up? We got Edo Bean in the chat. We're just enjoying your vocal stylings. Where's that ATAT -AT walker? Whoa! Uh, energy wave. Okay, so you'll notice now she's calling out what hits me. That's a feature of her level 2 and, th and beyond. So once you level up to level 3, she still does that. So that means that we leveled up in the last mission or so. Now, I won't get to keep that progress unless I clear the game with her, which I will. And then she will permanently be leveled up. I hope the final product gets a good amount of attention. It's a commendable effort that deserves recognition, not just... Just not the legal kind of... <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I really hope that this uh, gets, you know, a nice bit of new exposure for this game, uh, at least within the retro gaming community. You know, if it draws more attention to this game and to the Saturn, I'll be happy. And also, I hope that it might inspire some new young, you know, developers to make games, you know, somehow inspired by Bulk Slash, because I feel like the ideas in this game uh, had a lot of remaining untapped potential, you know, I would have loved to see a sequel to this. Uh, 
But failing that, maybe we can get, you know, a spiritual successor. Straight ahead. With a similar name. How do you make a similar name to Bulk Slash, though? I'm dying to know why they called it that. This boss is cool because he's the Virgil to your Dante. Or maybe the Dante to your Virgil. I salute you. Oh, what's up, Aquas? I didn't see you either. So we were talking about you earlier and your world records. Twin stick implementation is pretty cool. Isn't there another controller this game can, can use properly, though? Stage. Not that I know of. It doesn't have analog support. Um... Which means it also doesn't work with the mission stick, which was the other stick that I thought would be a good fit. That's an analog, like, flight sim style stick, though. It was made for uh, Space Harrier and Afterburner. Um, sounds like it'd be a blast with a twin stick. Yeah, and we will showcase that uh, on a later stream. I just wanted to make sure that I had coordinated that with the team, because it's already in, it's in this build. But I didn't want to uh, uh, fire that off prematurely. Everything about this localization looks and sounds pro. Well, thank you very much. That means a lot. I'm pretty sure there's been a lot of working designs comparisons. Yeah, yeah, and it's funny. Um, I haven't played a lot of their stuff. Um, I think because most of their stuff was RPGs, and I wasn't an RPG guy most of my life. And then it was like, I, play, I played uh, Silhouette Mirage and was very annoyed with all the gameplay uh, okay, liberties they took. And uh, I can see how that would be tempting when you're all, all up in the guts of a game. But um, with the, so the twin stick thing is the biggest liberty we took. And I find it semi-justifiable because one... Tech, like I was saying before, technically the twin stick is already compatible with every game. It's just a matter of how optimized the button layout is. Two, it doesn't hurt anything that they set out. Like it, it's completely out of the way um, of the original game experience. And three, the reason we were able to implement that layout is because there were there was a hidden controller layout in the settings menu. Uh, suggesting they were planning a fourth layout that they scrapped um, for whatever reason. So the slot was already there for us to do something with. Specifically for Knight of Dragon to do something with. Hold up. Let me charge up here. Uh, energy shot. Kickstart a spiritual sequel? Well, I'm going to leave that to the actual game developers. I'm just a language guy. Got my liberal arts degree, which has been collecting dust for some time now. I can't believe it, I got lost. What did I do? Oh, yeah? What have I done? Must have distracted myself at just the wrong time. Hold on. Hold up, so we go down, and then... Uh, this doesn't feel right. That's okay, not a big deal. You, c you can only get so lost in this level. The benefit of Saturn 3D games is that they're not very... They can't make the environments very big. Okay, here we are. And that's like, I actually like that. Like Panzer Dragoon Saga, that's one of maybe three RPGs that I've ever completed in my whole life. And it's because it's not its not that big. Pretty impressed with Edo's lines, and it doesn't sound that much like her knowing her. <laughs> yeah, she was saying you've known each other for decades, so that must be a trip. Hearing your friend in this game that you're the master of. <laughs> I 
Yeah, actually, uh, my friend Diana, who voices uh, Rupia Rude, uh, she. I'm also friends with her husband, and he was he was talking about how like, yeah, I can't even tell it's her, dude. <laughs> Like, yeah, that's the magic of it. Actually, I'm gonna switch to Napalm. Napalm Zone of the Enders is basically a spiritual sequel, sorta, kinda. You can't transform, though. Alright, let's see if I can pull off what I did on the last... Energy shot. Nope. Last time, I did that in one hit. And it's one of the best things I've ever done of any sort. Wow. That was amazing. <laughs> Laser. Hang in there. Enemy contact. Whoa. Things a real heart attack. Hey! Wow, I did not do well. Look at my health. Not an RPG guy myself, but did beat Sailor Moon another story untranslated somehow. It's my odd, odd RP. What is, is what is that a Saturn thing? Yeah, I'm not an RPG guy either. Yeah, let's listen to our idol chat. I haven't I haven't showcased that yet. Marco, do you ever think about starting a family? Oh yeah, Danthrax was referencing your speedrun videos. I don't know why, but I've, I have it in my head that this boss is... The, this boss always reminds me of a Dark Souls boss. So I always think of it as the Dark Souls boss. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm gonna need fire on it. Actually, napalm sometimes I have better luck with the napalm blaster on these bosses. I've beaten this game like 20 plus times now and I still don't have like a very scientific tactic for the final form of this upcoming fight. Coming up, we have Luzine uh, performing as Reason Lavia, and then my friend uh, Jonathan Boncher uh, as uh, Chris Dooley, the protagonist of the game. Let's hear what they have to say. Chris, don't get in my way, please. Reason, do you realize what you're about to do? Yes, of course I do. Chris, you know what we've been through. The persecution that's been wrought upon the people of Blau, including me. If we're ever to change this world, we need a leader with strong ideals and a chosen people to rule at his side. You're wrong, Reason. Creating a better society takes mutual respect and an ongoing drive toward a higher moral standard. If that had worked, we wouldn't be here right now. This is a holy war. It's going to change everything. A holy war? This? Taking millions of people hostage and using fear to get what you want? What you're doing is terrorism, plain and simple. Stop it! Why won't you understand? Why would you stand against me? Aren't you the Chris I grew up with? Sure am. And you're Reason Lavia. Don't forget that. The same Reason Lavia who loved sitting in the shade of that old oak tree and reading me poetry. The kind of person who would never do this. Yes. I am Reason Lavia. 
Acting Commander of the Gardner Army's 1st Special Air Squadron, Lieutenant Reason Lavia. Sworn enemy to your kind! Reason. It was hard to suddenly snap into melodrama in a game that's otherwise quite light-hearted and jaunty and, um, you know, they, they crammed 100% of the story into that, that these last two cutscenes. Um, oh man, did not use that very economically. This is not going great. Just keep rabbit hopping. Probably not gonna survive this. Fudge. Sorry guys. I made good time everywhere else though. Yeah, welcome to the plot dump portion of the game. That was a thing back then, I guess. Please select the stage. Maybe it still is. Fun fact, we've actually got these English lines lining up with the lip flaps better than the original Japanese voices do. Yeah, yeah, that, I mean, in a way, okay, some of the game's flaws uh, sort of made us more comfortable with our own work, I guess, you know, like, uh, my, I, I kind of have this mental goal to m minimize how many flaws we're adding to the game, uh, and, you know, if we can clean something up, great, but, um, you know, the game has some flaws to begin with, like, they recycle a lot of the same animations for the navigators, so the lip flap is often not that good. Sometimes we are able to make it better in English. Sometimes because of the way the animation and audio syncs up, there was no way to make it better. Uh, but uh, on the whole, I think that, you know, it, uh, we, if anything, the lip flap is probably slightly better than it was in the first place. It was amazing, wasn't it? TV. Alright, I need to not make so many boneheaded moves. I keep forgetting how important it is to conserve your health in this level. Woohoo! -hoo. Dude! I love dropping down on that big cluster of enemies and unloading. So Aquas, you have world records. Let me ask you, do you ever use the station the uh, stationary aim where you hold the fire button and then hit the D-pad to aim in a direction? Because I always find that it's it's safer and easier to just jump and shoot. Mega Man style. Fire blaster. Ugh. Still don't know the timing to... reaction into death. Uh, sure wasn't it. I need to study that VOD where I did it perfectly. Whoa. That's pretty darn good. I'll take that. Whoa. Not at all. I didn't realize that was a thing. Wow. That's a thing. Oh my god. Man, this is going well, and now it's not. Alright. This is the strategy I used to use exclusively. I always forget what speed I'm supposed to use here, though. Whoa. And it's harder when the satellites are out.
Well, we're back where we were before. Almost exactly. Yeah, I don't think the aiming is very effective for much. They just put so many ideas in this game. There's a lot of stuff in this game. Well, I did almost precisely as bad this time. <laughs> I didn't get lost. Wow. I don't know if you guys know the Mr. FPGA project, but they're working on a Saturn core, and it seems like it might become a reality. Saturn is kind of unfortunate because it's still kind of inaccessible, but emulation is better, I guess, in recent years. True. Maybe if that comes out, Saturn will get more traction from the retro community. I had no regrets getting into that system in the past couple of years. I don't know much about the Mr. Proje project. Uh, the, re the, uh, the other thing, the Swiss Army console that I'm suddenly forgetting the name of, that has Saturn support, right? The hell is that called? <laughs> uh, I keep thinking Turbo Duo, but that's super not it. Uh, the <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about, where you like buy the different modules and going blank. Chris, don't right. get in my way. All right, plan B, get all up in his face, in his teeth and gums. Give him space gingivitis. All right, well, this is not great. I know what you mean, but I forget the name too. It's funny, I, don't, I feel like I just saw it come up the other day. Guys, this is going poorly. these lock-on missiles to lock on better. I'm sorry guys. Man, doing extra bad today. PGA reprograms itself to act as its system, but it. Sorry, it was a bad time to read the chat again. Only as good as the devs make it. No input lag, potentially better emulation. In most cases, it is better. Mm hmm. In any case, it's an exciting time to be into retro games, and they keep making, like, they keep coming up with cool new solutions. I feel like it's just getting better and better. Um, in a way, it it feels like the the new is or the old is new again, right? And and that's kind of been my feeling with this bulk slash project and uh, with the the whole Sega Saturn Shiro channel and and community. It feels like. Being able to enjoy this stuff that I've enjoyed sort of in isolation for the last 14 years, because I got into the Saturn like in 2007, uh, is making it feel new again. Uh, like even if it's it's not like in the mainstream, in the mainstream, 
it feels like it's there's sort of this mini zeitgeist around these old games uh, that's breathing new life into it and making it exciting to be a fan again instead of feeling like every time you bring up a Saturn you're going to alienate everyone in the room I sort of had this reputation back at Capcom for like being into stuff that nobody else thought was good <laughs> uh, and so people used to sort of tease me but it was like the, the examples were like Capcom's own stuff like God Hand and Monster Hunter and Lost Planet <laughs> I was like guys this is our stuff get into it They came around with Monster Hunter. Oop. Fire Blaster. Story of my life right there. Yeah, I have a feeling that's the case for a lot of Saturn fans. <laughs> Lost Planet is so cool. Isn't it though? Lost Planet 2 specifically is my is like maybe my number one favorite game. I I play through it every year. No, oh, it's gonna wait. Uh, but, uh, nothing. Would you please not screw my run again? That is what I'm talking about. Not quite one Z's, but it was like three Z's. I'll take it. I only fly during the second boss. Well, that's how I used to do it until I had that amazing chain reaction uh, I think on the Rupia playthrough changed my life Energy shot. would you come here you Ugh. what's the name of a Dark Souls boss so I can make fun of him Set speed to 25% and hammer away at the boss's core until it dies. Oh, that's how you get through the corridor one. Shields are looking good. Yep, see, this is how you got to get to this final encounter. And then you don't really need a good strategy. You can just kind of spray and pray and absorb a lot of hits. Yeah. Unless you do really badly, Laser. which I am. Enemy contact. Bro, Laser. reason. What the? It's like someone needs a chocolate chew. zone today Incendiary. Oof. Enemy not contact. good what are you doing uh, that's a fair question Stand aside now, Reason. I just... 
I just wanted to do something to ease all the suffering, all the frustration of the people of Blau. At this very moment, three billion lives hang in the balance. Whatever you're after, you won't achieve it by going down in history as an agent of genocide. Don't you think I realize that? I just... I couldn't... Reason! <laughs> Still not sure I'm happy with that final reason. It's hard. It's it was hard to get there. We tried about 30 takes. We had a sep we had a second recording session that was just screaming reason over and over. Uh, it's just hard to uh, match a specific length of time and to try and nail the tone without it sounding corny. But it's also like, well, maybe it's okay to sound a little corny because. I mean, look. <laughs> Raisins. Translating this poem took a while. Shout out to Danthrax for the custom font. Okay, so that voice has not been... Hey, shut up. This isn't like you, Chris. That voice has not been dubbed yet, the computer voice, uh, but we did record it with Cargodin, uh, who uh, did that in another part and um, was a delight to work with. Cargodin's a fellow translator, so that was fun. Um, so, sorry, I'll let this play out. アロイスガルドナーは実質で自殺を図っているのが発見され、福神の下春とは連合軍特殊部隊により射殺された。こうしてアロイスガルドナーの野望は次へたのである。Gotta allow a little corniness given the game and the times. Yeah, yeah, you do. It's fun to draw that font. I'm glad because I, <laughs> I always feel bad. Especially because we kept going back and forth on like whether or not to use that font. But I'm happy with our decision. Just look at Shenmue, best bad English voice acting. Yeah, but I, I feel like that that game wears thin after a while. I feel like there there was <laughs> because I feel like in that game it ran counter to the whole immersion thing that they seem to be going for. That was more than a little corniness. It'll be, oh man, I'm one of those bullies. <laughs> so we now have the bullies, both bullies and the, uh, um, the protecting kid recorded. All these credits are placeholder. Um, uh, that's not even the correct Japanese. This is all random Chinese. Uh, but we're working on it. The credits are surprisingly a big, hard, and tedious task. Maybe that's not surprising. Hey, I got Leonie's ending. That reporter's scream is so good. Edel Bean, thank you for the follow. It's an honor. Look at those points fly. Oh man, I uh, didn't. Uh, not even close. Oh well. Oh, okay. Retro heart. What is the Richard from? I know, I know this, but I don't. At least you didn't. Go into Resident Evil or House of the Dead 2 direction. Yeah, we had some dignity about it. 
Please tell me your name. All right, guys. Place your votes. Should I enter a normal name or a dirty name? Because they have different voice reactions. I love the feel of this this letter wheel. Okay, dirty Aquas, you got it. You were the first to answer. I don't know if it works with any word besides this. That's dirty. <laughs> Lacquerware after dark. And then it's it enters my name as Socks. Now that's dirty. I tested almost every dirty word I could think of on the screen. Oh you did? So what are there any other ones? So now Hold up. Launching operation. Just turning up my TV a little so I can actually hear. Okay, off we go. All right, let's go for it. So now I have all of her voice samples and can enjoy them at my leisure. That was amazing. I can just sit here. That was amazing. When I do something amazing. like I'm, when I could have this on while I'm working, when I do something good at work, I'm. Just, Thank you. Nothing creepy about that. All right. So now that she's leveled up, I think she's probably level three by now. Uh, so maybe the, the dialogue should be a little different. No more of my fugly voice. <laughs> oh, go on. Only sex is censored, if I call, recall correctly. It's just the kind of low effort I'd expect from this dev team. Just kidding. So wait. I'm trying to ping her. I might still only be level 2, but that means I'm probably going to level up soon. I just want to show a little bit of her level 3 VO because it, it changes like pretty significantly. Yeah, I guess that means I should be going fast. Gotta go fast! Yeah, we're still in level 2 here. Your voice and your voice work for this localization is great. Yeah, I agree with Retro Heart. Also, when we were so I was reviewing the Shiro stream the other day, and my my wife was sort of watching over my shoulder, and there were there were like multiple times where you said something, and my wife was like, "She's so cute." <laughs> so let that be a feather in your cap. I remember there being two walkers so close to each other. Aren't these things cool though? They're just chilling here. I'm saying these stages are like full of cool. <laughs> There's lots of dynamic action. So, speaking of imperfections in the game, one of the weird challenges is that, uh, so, there, so the navigators call out the type of weapon that hits you when you get hit, 
Uh, now for the... If a bomb's area of effect... Right here? No, 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 that, that's because the actual projectile hit me. Um, if the, if the AoE hits you, she says incendiary, and that's based on the Japanese word bakuing. Which literally means like explosive flame. Uh, but she uses, they use the same term for that flamethrower, which I got hit by earlier. Uh, and there's only one flamethrower in the whole game, as far as I've seen. And so they just double up, they use that same term, buckling. Uh, and so we had the challenge of coming up with an English word that can both mean a bomb blast or a flame. Uh, and I forget if it was Dan or Burnt Ends that brought up Incendiary, it was one of you guys. Uh, and I was like, that's pretty perfect. And um... That worked, but then just the other day I was working on Lyra, who's one of the other navigators, and notice she doesn't use the word baku, and she uses the word bakudang, which just means bomb. And it makes me think that, like, the flamethrower thing was maybe something that they had, like, like an enemy type they had, con they had originally expected to have more of, but then they got rid of them, but then they forgot about one or something. Uh, because in the Japanese version, when you get hit by the flamethrower, she says, A BOMB! Which doesn't really make any sense. So we, I just translated it that way. She goes, they got bombs! Please select the stage. So that's actually a, like a legacy mistake that we left in. Yes, wife approved. I'm excited about this haul of Saturn stuff I got today, guys. Nice big... There's like a pallet of goodies from Surugaya. I just discovered Surugaya the other day, or like a few weeks ago, I guess. And then I told my... So we just moved. We just bought a home. Uh, which is a great time to start buying video games. You know, it's actually, because rent was so ridiculous, actually not much more of an expense other than like some of the appliances we have to get serviced. We're actually saving money month to month. <laughs> but um, as a sort of little housewarming gift to myself, I got a little uh, care package from Surugaya, and that place is very reasonable with its prices on a lot of stuff. Um, Baroque? On the Saturn, which I tried to buy last year, but because the USPS was being sabotaged, it never showed up. I never lost anything in the mail until last year, and I lost two separate significant shipments in the mail. Never to be found again. I just hope some lucky mail carrier eventually got that copy of Baroque for the Saturn. But anyway, I, I have finally acquired Baroque for the Saturn. <laughs> so Edo Bean, was there a, like an aspect of recording for this that you found particularly, uh, I don't know, challenging or particularly fun? Just any, any like specific remarkable aspects of it that occur to you? Not to put you on the spot, but if if you have anything. Enemy contact ahead at 12 o'clock. 
Okay, I, I didn't even notice, but she's leveled up during this mission, so now she's giving more precise navigation. Whoa! Good to know you can level up mid-mission. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. It's like a little, <laughs> I don't know, motivating when the VO suddenly changes. I salute you. All the clocks. Yeah, there's so there's about 75 lines, not counting the endings. Please select the stage. Uh... For each navigator, there's about 75 lines, um, but then 12 of them are just n naming the d the numbers of the clock. All right, let's go for it. Uh, Target at one and then Target there's at like there's another section that's just. Target at three o'clock. Uh, what was Target it? At four o'clock. I forget. There's like two sections that I consider the doldrums of every recording session because there's just not much direction to give. Just wanted to show this again. Might I trouble you to tag along? All right, let's go for it. Target at one o'clock. Oh, wow! Ahead at twelve o'clock. Target at four o'clock. Field recovery. Target at two o'clock. Target at four o'clock. Oh, the others, yeah, that's right. The others 1 through 10, when you're, uh, so every navigator tells you how many targets you have left after you destroy a target. And it's 1 through 10. Even though in the game there's never more than 5 targets. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, it's just like a lot of, okay, open this file, start a new track. Say the word eight several times. Save file. Open next project. You know, it's just like very uh, tedious. Uh, probably not much fun for the actors either. <laughs> but it's cool. It's a cool feature in the game. You know? Need a bulk slash map editor with a 10 target map. That would be very cool. But yeah, I mean, one of the cool sort of uh, side effects of working on this project is is it's sort of an archaeology project, you know, uh, where you're seeing some of this stuff in the game that hints at other plans they might have had or ide you know ideas that they at least put the hooks in for, you know. I mean, it makes sense. Maybe they recorded the actors before they knew the exact game design, you know, level design, so they just had them record up to 10 and then figured it out later. One of the biggest chains in the game is under that train tunnel. Ah. Oh, this right here? It's about 32, dang. So I guess that's a good way to raise your score, especially if you're playing. I think Rupia uh, responds well to chain combos. So what's your strategy for this boss? I always try and go for the base. 
I think the base and the body are both targets. Sometime, once in a while I get lucky and get like a super hit and I don't really understand what the criteria for it is. Hey! I gotta be honest, I don't really understand the lock-on missiles very well. I feel like they often miss, even though they appear to be locked on. Dodging that thing is super exciting looking, though. Boss is super random, yeah. Speedrun killer. If you want the boss to commit to that yellow aura attack, then you can bull rush it with auto fire. Ah, it's too fast to do consistent damage otherwise, I see. Please select the stage. Alright. I think this will be the last stage. And then I mean, I don't know, I usually stream till eleven. So I don't know. Why don't you guys tell me? Do you want me to finish this second playthrough with Leone, or do you, would you like right, me to it. show okay, one of the other navigators? I can, uh, in this build, we have Rupia, who's in stage five. Or actually, she won't be in stage five because I already beat the game with her. But I can, I can reset. So we have Rupia, and we have Medical Flare. Target set. Remaining three targets. Switch to Naira on this stage. She's not implemented, but uh, yeah, I'm not using the latest build. I'm using the the Leone build just because I already had it on disc. But yeah, just to reiterate, we have since implemented uh, Naira Savage. Here, I'll at least show where she is. And she should still be in Japanese, but uh, and then just today. I, I put what I believe will be the finishing touches on uh, Lyra. Yeah, and I also didn't, I didn't want to, uh, like, I'm trying to honor this, this uh, ar arrangement where we're giving the Shiro guys the every character debut on their channel uh, and then and so I'm waiting for their show to debut each character and then streaming that character on my own channel uh, even though we have these other characters ready and I'm super eager to show them off you know Those guys have so much trouble with this stage, and I think that I think Saturn Dave he's probably just overcomplicating it. I feel like th th this is the quickest stage for me usually. This is this is a slow run for me. I think the problem is that he's he's. Uh, all, he's he's going up or down too much when you can really like just stay on the at the default altitude and like everything that matters is basically on that same like roughly at the same altitude you got to go up a little I guess Whoa. and lots of like zigzagging helps. Planning on streaming the build I was shown in the near future. Oh, cool. Yeah, please keep us posted on any bulk slash related stuff you do. 
I will pretty much indiscriminately retweet any bulk slash related thing at this point. Unless it's like horrible. <laughs> you know, like, Bigots for bulk slash anonymous. <laughs> Won't retweet that. This stage can be tough, especially when you keep dropping the bomb. Yeah. I guess you have to you have to do a lot of dodging. He he also struggles with this boss a lot though, and I I think the trick to this boss is just take your time and do like lots of flybys and know which body parts you can you can hit. There's an order there's like a PEMDAS to this boss. Nose, nose, wings, dorsal fin. <laughs> I'm polygonal. Wondering how is this game doing transparencies without the typical artifacts you get with that on Saturn? On polygonal objects? Can you give an example? There's lots of faked transparencies in this. Oh. Using the the what do you call it? the dithering? Oh. Cross hatch method. Like my well, I'm not a polygonal object, but like the 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 thrust of the, of the guardial of of the uh, mech that I'm piloting. Saturn is capable of actual transparency. It's just more complicated to do it correctly than on other cons. Yeah, right. Because something about this processor can do it, but then any layers behind the transparent object become invisible or something. I saw an interesting video about it. Please select the stage. Movement is actually determined on this guy, so the quick kill isn't so bad. Always moves forward then turns. Oh, I never even internalize that. I always just use the navigator to recenter on them and just kind of swoop by and get as many pot shots as I can on whatever parts vulnerable at top speed. All right, let's go for it. Target at 10 o'clock. Just using transparent polygons will cause artifacts, so devs had to use other ways to get around it. Dithering or flickering, yeah. Or a combination of the two. I'm playing, so as far as my stream setup, it's not fancy. Um, I've got the Saturn, oops, pushing a composite out, plain old composite. Uh, and then that's going into a cheapo composite to HDMI upscaler that I got for like 20 bucks. Um, it does the job. Uh, I'm playing on a nice Sony Trinitron. I don't know how big this TV, but it's bigger than any TV I ever grew up with. <laughs> and I got it for free from Craigslist. Um, this is a very nice CRT. Uh, and you know, like, I have S-Video, I have a, an S-Video cable for Saturn that I keep right next to the Saturn so that I can switch between the composite and S-Video, but I often think the composite looks better because it blends, uh, the dithered, uh, graphics while the, the cross-hatching is super clear with S-Video and often doesn't look as good. I also could swear that the S video looks more washed out a lot of the time. Pretty good feed for composite. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not terrible, right? Like people get so it's such a rabbit hole um trying to get the best possible quality signal but like this is this is not bad. I, 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 oh. Nearing 
I'm like still just amazed and overjoyed that I'm able to capture my own footage and stream in the first place. So like, you know, maybe one day I'll get into the whole RGB thing. Right now, that's a little much for me. If component on the component on the Saturn is any good, that I could do relatively easily because I have. Uh, Aww. Uh, because I have a uh, component in on the CRT. And then I just need a component to HDMI so I can capture it. Okay. Whoop. Good lord. This thing's gonna do a lot of damage. Composite on a monitor. Oh, wait, I missed some stuff. Whoa! Alright, hold on. Let me clear this out, and then I'll catch up on the chat. Okay. If you notice, these explosions are transparent polygons, but you only see the walls through them. The walls are rendered. Like to get some dinner? The walls are rendered by VDP one, as are the explosion. Here, here's an explosion. Sure enough. Oh, so if I do that in front of an enemy, you won't be able to see the enemy. Is that what you're saying? You can't see the floor through them because that's... Whoa! Oh, whoops. You're right. Man, you've really been paying close attention. Huh. Brain kind of fills in the gaps. Composite on a modern scale it looks damn good. My retro tank does a fantastic job. Wow. One of the bosses had transparent wings. That's what got me thinking. Yeah, that I think is... Oh yeah, Dan, you're talking about it. Wings probably work just like the explosions. Probably can't see VDP2's so floors through them. Can't really do polygons. The explosions are made by VDP1. Can do transparencies with its own polygons as far as I know. Would you like to get some dinner? Aww. Corporal. Lots of tech jargon. Never mind. It's, it's interesting though, because the Saturn, like nothing else really works like the Saturn, I, I gather. Like having very Target. little knowledge in this realm. Which has made it harder to preserve, and I think that that makes it all the more important to try and preserve it. You know, you have to, uh, it has to be a concerted effort. And this isn't quite the same thing as ma making. Like I don't know. I, I feel like this localization project is at heart a form of of preservation. Um, even though we're taking our own liberties, just by nature of when you localize something, you're taking liberties. Uh, but it's in the name of the game, re you know, not getting buried and lost to time, and hopefully being seen by more people. Yeah, Saturn is a massive hack. The, yeah, the explosions. Do you ever think about starting a I mean, that stuff is... It, I respect stuff like that a lot. I think that's so clever. Enemy and, you, like, you can sort of see under the hood when you, when you know to look for that stuff. But, like, 
it doesn't really affect the experience. Like, I'm, I'm not conscious of, like, yeah, the floors just disappear when there's an explosion in front of them. <laughs> Sorry. Don't be mad. Stay back. Die, bad robots. Such a nice looking game. I'm saying. Also, also, like, this was the age of the pre rendered. What do you call it? Like, the digitized. 3D model sprite, like the Donkey Kong Country thing, where the sprite is a pre-rendered 3D model that's been turned into a sprite. Uh, and that was almost invariably a hideous technique, <laughs> and there are lots of examples of it on the Saturn that were hideous. Uh, but here I think it it actually mixes with the 3D backgrounds really well, and I, it, like, I think it's pretty cool looking. Especially the transformation animations. It's pretty cool. Part of me wish we could have put it Chris, please have my babies. Yeah. I wish we had done like a B-side track. Bulk slash goofy edition. Radar, speed meter, and shield meter are all showing transparency too, but those are rendered by BDP2. Oh. That I knew about, actually. From you. <laughs> Whoa, that one missile just hit the sweet spot, I guess. Yeah, Kina does have a kid kid with the uh Target at eleven o'clock main character. Yee, balls. Lots of balls. Yeah, the missile trails are so cool looking, and I feel like that's such a distinctly Saturn looking effect. Like, it reminds me of the lasers in Panzer Dragoon, or layer section. I feel like a lot of Saturn games have those trails. It's funny reading all the hit on Chris lines, yeah. <laughs> Someone in our bulk slashes Discord's general chat actually noticed that we changed Leone's age from 18 to 19. I think the first one was a couple weeks ago. The stage. Oh, 16 to 19. I gotta check my eyes. Good lord. Did they? What did they think of it? I don't think they were mad or anything. They just wanted to know why we chose to do that. So I explained our our servers, our severs, our several reasons. Yeah, the, the game, the manual in game originally says she's 16, but the uh, website listed her as 19. But I think uh, medical is also 16. Yeah. You kind of... <clears throat> it's what, you know, there's like... Mostly this is like a pretty PG-13 game, but there's a few 
All right, let's go for it. Sort of at one o'clock. Elements like that that are very Target of their time and place that are a little uncomfortable. I think especially for Americans where legal age of consent is considerably older than Target sixteen. Uh and you know, I, I in the name of preservation I've I've been very wary of doing like taking like certainly censoring but making any kind of creative changes that aren't just to just in the name of conveying something in another language have been mostly very against because I feel like it's not really our place to do that um, we were messing with the metadata for the character splash screens already because we wanted to clean up some of the the misspelled English and, and spell like language inconsistencies, and that just came up. And we were we were looking at the website, uh, and I think it just kind of felt like. Oosh. I forget exactly how we decided to go with the website one. It was probably just like, oh yeah, part of it was that she's a, oh, she's a sergeant first class in the military. <laughs> Uh, so I guess it just felt like it made sense. Enemy contact. What? Koronsteiner Gunso. Tadaima Tojaku. Atashi no Navi wa jotsu sugoi wa yo. Oh yeah. We'll get to her. That's going to be the last one we record and that's going to be a fun session. Energy shot. We're all right. Target at 9 o'clock. Oh, I better. Ooh, I better make a beeline for that mountain. I can remember where it is. Target at one o'clock. Here we go. Target. Target at two o'clock. Target at five o'clock. Target at one o'clock. Oh, wow. Failed recovery. Stay back. Ah, energy shot. Nearing target. Behind us. Six o'clock. Target at ten o'clock. Target at one o'clock. Target destroyed. Remaining two targets. Target at eleven. Ah! Yeah. Laser. Target at two o'clock. Ahead at twelve o'clock. With the wonder kind. Plus, a 19 year old player character marries her in the ending, so it was like, can we please make her 19? Yeah, that's the thing. That's part of it, too. And yeah, I mean, you could, pff, suppose you could argue that an unknown amount of time has passed. But whatever. If someone wants to hack that out, <laughs> then they're welcome to. Energy shot. Wow. Target at ten o'clock. Yeah, there's not much you can do about Kina. Uh, and honestly, I had never really seen her until we were working on this project because she's so thoroughly hidden. You have to beat the game seven times to get Kina. But you know, it's like there's not actually any content in the game that's that like disturbing or anything. It's just, just kind of like... I don't know. Vaguely uncomfortable depending on your interpretation. <laughs> Target. Ahead at 12 o'clock. Wow. Target 
Yeah, you have to play the game a lot to unlock everything. I used to find this boss really hard to hit consistently, but no, it's actually a very simple procedure. Oop. Yeah, or you can get the save data from Danthrax. <laughs> Three mil is kind of tight. Gotta get those big change. Yeah. I never really sweat the score that much. I like getting the chains because it's fun. But I'm kind of just down to... Because it's also like, well, if you just keep all right, let's keep go. playing the game, you will eventually unlock everything. Uh, and I like the game, so I have no problem with it. And it's just occurring to me, though, that I'm going to have to do all this semi soon if I want to showcase Kina on my own channel. Because I lost all my save data a while back. Uh, and I currently only have th uh, two of the navigators unlocked. Oh well. Not gonna lie, I wasn't expecting to play through the whole game twice, but uh, I'm just having such a good time. What a good game they made. Uh, energy shot. Most levels have like three to six decent chains. The rest are puny in comparison. The exponential growth in the chains is insane. Oh. Just burn the save game, copy your utility to a disc with my unlock save. Oh. Then copy. Copy the save file off the CD. To your oh, okay, that's a good. I, f I forgot that was a thing. But wouldn't it be so much more fun to unlock everything the hard way? See how desperate I get. Eventually I will get an ODE, I'm sure. It's just <laughs> probably gonna take a while before I'm ready to drop the money. Not that amazing. Mm, 
There we go. <laughs> That's the stuff. I seriously rarely just sit down and play a video game. It's purely for fun anymore. Wow. I mean, I enjoy playing Bulk Slash. And I enjoy the games that I stream, usually, often. <laughs> but last night was the first time in a long while that I just like sat and played a game that wasn't part of some other venture, <laughs> you know. I played Shadow Dancer on the Genesis, and uh, that was a pretty good time. Corporal, um, never mind. It's nothing. Poor Leone. Can't find the words. Shadow Dancer is nice. Yeah, it's a cool game with a ninja pup. Chris. What I noticed about Shadow Dancer last night is it does a great job with very simple mechanics of making Laser. you feel like a ninja Laser. with these like exciting battles. Because everyone's flipping all over the place and there's all these like, you gotta do all this fancy footwork to dodge everything and retaliate. Laser. And the dog is just like this cherry on top. It's not actually that helpful, which I think makes it even more endearing. It's like a, a dog that's with you the entire game, who's only helpful like a little bit. <laughs> There's mostly moral support. Whoa. I mean, it's possible that there are a lot of tricks I don't know about the dog, but... Oh, and steady now. I gotta say, I'm, I'm playing with the multi-controller, the analog pad, except you can't use the analog pad, so I'm playing with the D-pad on that controller, but I love the feel of this controller. The triggers, I've never been that in love with this, the, the original Saturn pad uh, triggers, because they barely go in when you push them. Uh, and then also, I always thought the original pad was uh, it's it's so light that it feel, I don't know it feels it makes it feel cheap. You want there to be a little weight, uh, and this definitely has a better weight about it. Oh my god! Okay, we got him. Chris came back to judgment for the first time in two years the other day. Really get sucked into those Yakuza games. Yeah, man, th those really went from zero to big hits all of a sudden, it felt like. And I guess it was, I guess it was kind of a gradual thing in reality, but I'm glad that they finally found their stride in the West. So pro. Cargo Din, if you're out there watching, I'm sorry we haven't implemented your computer voice yet. Uh, I'll try to get it in the next one. I almost wanted to do it tonight, but then I was like, Hey, chin up. This isn't like you, Chris. Sorry, I just wanted to, to let that play out because I missed it last time. Um. <laughs> One sec, my mic stand just declamped itself. ほぼほぼ。ほぼほぼ。ほぼほぼ。ほぼほぼ。ほぼほぼ。ほぼほぼ。ほぼほぼ。ほぼほぼ。ほぼほぼ。ほぼほぼ。ほぼほぼ。
Okay, sorry about that. Man, the, the table that I have my mic clamped to is like precisely engineered to make it as hard as possible to clamp a mic to it. Just like every feature of its design seems like an anti-mic clamp measure. <laughs> it's just the table I happen to have, you know? <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, with Cargo Din's computer voice line, I realized that I'd probably have to figure out some, like, uh, if, like, audio effects to apply to make it sound more like the weird robot voice in the game. So I was like, yeah, it's probably going to take some time. I don't think I can squeeze it in today. But next build, I'll try to have it in. Yes, Chris, watch this poor girl get bullied and do nothing about it. Yeah, and also, like, it's like, ah, uh, that takes me back to <laughs> my childhood with that woman I just killed. <laughs> you know, it's like, this wasn't really a happy ending. <laughs> He's, like, walking off, like, he looks so satisfied with himself. <laughs> he just pieces out. It's because he knows the boy's got it. He's like, nah, that kid. He's got it from here. The robot voice ends up sounding like the virtual one announcer. You've got to tell us how you did it. I'm going to have to replay virtual one. I don't remember how they sound. Ah, <laughs> oh, so close. I don't think I've ever gotten level three. All right, so we did dirty word last time. Let's do the uh, non-dirty. <laughs> That's a nice name. Oh, she's so sweet. <laughs> That's a good emoticon. <laughs> Alright, well that's, uh, man, we still have a bunch of time. I guess I don't have to go to 11. Just for kicks. I'll show a little bit of medical flair, because it's been a while. Why is there no your name sucks option? There, I actually, so I'll show a little rupia until I get medical. Here, yeah, let's do that. I'll be good for you. I'll do a level with her and then a level with medical. Why do I want to be cruel in this game? We, yeah, we should have auditioned you for Rupia. Let's get Keep going straight. Although I'm very happy with our Rupia. Oh, wow. Fire blaster. Hell yeah. More to the right. Oops. I meant. Oh, wow. Keep going straight. Target's close by. Keep going straight. Oh, wow. You got moves. More to the bingo. You nailed it. At least four of them. Failed recovery. Keep going straight. So we're still, let's see. We're still not at uh, level three with Rupia. Right. 
close by. Keep going straight. Bingo, you nailed it. At least three of them. Shield with the yeah. I'm a goody two shoes character. Yeah, it's pretty true. Leone is is the the goodiest two shoes of the game, I think. Actually, only level one with Rufia. At least two of them. Shield recovered. Keep going straight. Target close by. Keep going. Oh! oh, wow. Bingo, you nailed it. At least one of them. Shield recovered. Keep going straight. Target close by. Or to the left. I like her voice. Yeah, we, you know, it was fun figuring out what direction to go with Rupia. And when Diana landed on the southern accent thing, it felt like a revelation. Like, oh yeah, this is what this is the dimension that was missing from this character. This boss is really visually impressive. It's a great punch early on in the game just to be like, yeah, we're not messing around here. We're, we're making a very impressive game. Skippy. Kind of want to go through stage two too. I want to see if I can level her up once. It's a decent chain there. Rupio likes when you take stuff because she's a thief. So you gotta get those point items. Oh wow! You got moved. Fire 
blaster. <laughs> Bingo, you nailed it. At least one of them. Shield <laughs> recovered. He's going straight. He's going straight. He's going straight. More to the right. Target's close by. More to the right. Bingo, you nailed it. Shield recovered. Something's coming, and it ain't no small fry. <laughs> Any tips on this boss? I don't have a great strategy here either. I feel like it's another one where like sometimes I get lucky and I don't really understand why. And, like I'll, I'll like one shot will almost kill it. Her sass is great. Yeah, she's the sass master. Rupia rude with the tood. Ah. What a cool boss. Saturn Dave came from below on this. Yeah, I remember that. Um, but I don't know, like... Because I don't really struggle to survive in this boss. I just feel like there's got to be a way to do it faster. Tried that a couple days ago and it worked pretty well. Oh, yeah? All right, let's raise hands. I was trying it uh, earlier today and uh, I don't know. Uh, a day or two ago. But it wasn't really doing me any favors. How do you do? I am Medical Flag. Might I trouble you to tag along? Yes. Let us be off. Onwards. Onwards. Once again, this is Dark Misty as Medical Flare. Onwards. Check out Dark Misty. That's Misty. Uh, M Y S T Y. Uh, Dark Misty ASMR on YouTube. So wait, how do you get this fabled large chain? Or is this the wrong? This is obviously the wrong place. Oh, in here? Shield recovered. To the rear. This? Right. I'm gonna let this ship blow up, aren't I? We don't disappoint. Cool. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that. Onwards. Oh my god. This poor ship. We're nearing a target. To the rear. Onwards. Medical is already. Let's see. Oh no, she's still level one also. We can't take another hit.
onwards. Oh man. Are to they the gonna rear. give it to me? To the rear. You don't disappoint. We might still do this. Onwards. To the rear. To our right. Hey. That's pretty good. Magic pixel. Something's coming. Voice sounds perfect coming out of medical. Yep. <laughs> See, they lived. I'm a good protector. To our left. Onward. Oh yeah, the Vulcan works better than the God than the missiles here, huh? But I don't know, sometimes you do get lucky. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, survive by the skin of its teeth. <laughs> I was just trying to make the stream more exciting. level <laughs> I don't know why but they they chime in with the directions like way more frequently in this level than in any of the other ones that's, the spirit. Just that's just how the game works they just tell you f to go forward like every two seconds Do a lot of strafe flying in the stage. I find that it makes it easier to dodge all the crap. There's a lot of crap dodging you gotta do here. Saturn Dave, if you're out there, take notes. Right into the hornet's nest. Usually I clear that area out first. I think we should change ship shield to royal ship. Something's coming. To make it more obvious which ship's meter that is. Eh I think it's I think it's clear enough. With with the advent of a readable briefing, always seem too generic. Onwards. Well, yeah, I guess if you haven't been observant, you could not put it together that it's not talking about your own shield. I don't know. It's hard for me to gauge because I've never oof, not known what to do in that stage. Onwards. 
But the br briefing should make it pretty clear. See how this isn't that bad? If you just pace yourself and mostly... You gotta you spend just as much time flying away from it as you do flying at it. I think that's the thing. Because you want to make sure you have enough distance that you can safely hit X, Y, or Z to turn around and come at it. Everyone has all these great accents. Yeah, this one's authentic. Diana's was affected, although she did spend some time living in the south. Um, but this is an actual English accent. I may select the stage if you please. And uh, I selfishly thought it made sense for the uh, default navigator to have an American accent. Which is what I think you have, right? It's not Canadian. Bezier Blaster is a little weak. Dave needs to learn how to strafe. Do you know if he plays with type A or type C? I can play some Wing Commander. I've actually never played Wing Commander. I started watching that uh, video Pandemonium did about the Gen War. Gen War? It's a Saturn game that was not actually on my radar. It looks. I didn't get that far in the video. It looks kind of decent. I like a good cockpit action game. Wonder if it has twin stick support. Probably not because it was supposed to be a launch game.
remember when Gen Warp? I remember Gen Warp being advertised in a bootleg sampler video. Yeah, it sounds like they were sort of screwed out of uh, console launch. Uh, screwed out of being a launch title because they did, Sega did that ninja launch. So a few copies never saw it in action. Yeah, I've, I've, I've only seen the little bits of footage that were in like the first couple minutes of that video. Now that's video game. All right, I got one more stage in me, I think. I and then I think I'm gonna call it. Although, we do have 20 minutes left and we only have two stages left. Let's see how I feel after this stage. Maybe I can speed run it. Let us be off. Onwards. We're nearing a target. Onwards. She hasn't leveled up, has she? It's kind of a surprise. Am I playing really crappily? Ooh. Maybe it's because I did so badly in stage 3. Maybe it's because I didn't have her until stage 3. You were talking about having a chain that goes all the way around it. Onwards. You don't disappoint. I think compliments are in order. Yeah, you have to like. You have to like chase it, huh? Oh wow. Like Domino Rally. Remember Domino Rally? Nineties kids. I think Do they still have that? Maybe they still have it. <laughs> Do little kids still find dominoes impressive? Onward. 
Man, she's still hasn't leveled up. I was surprised. Surprised I don't at least have level two. Oh, you know she prefers jet mode. I haven't been. I haven't been taking care to stay in jet mode. Finish this run so you can unlock her on the navigator screen. She's... Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, I should do that. And then... And then I'll have half of them uh, that I need for Kina. That's not too bad. Finally select the stage. Don't patronize me. There's only one stage. <laughs> Really should have programmed th that boss to fly up and down a bit. Yeah. Leave everything <clears throat> to me, my dear. <gasps> Mind the energy shot. This is the Kina room, by the way. That's where I they keep Kina. Conveniently labeled the room. Uh, I got cocky. Okay, okay, hold on. I hit you. One bath, one Kina. <laughs> it's a modern amenity. Gimme, gimme. Getting better at looking at the mini map to gauge when he's coming back. Okay, here come the satellites, right?
Yeah. Terrible run on this boss. I guess that napalm blast it didn't really do me any favors. The idea. I don't remember it being so hard to catch her in that first phase. That wasn't so bad, I guess. Hey. And that's medical flare. Chris. Hey, hey. So pro. Oh yeah, I forgot I have to leave the room now. Why do you mourn so? You mustn't make such a face in my presence. Here we go again. レンゲ的にガルドナー軍の残党を処理していった。アロイスガルドナーは実質で自殺を図っているのが発見され、復讐のゲハルトは連合軍特殊部隊により射殺された。こうしてアロイスガルドナーの野望は継いえたのである。ちゃんに言いつけてやる。もう遊んでやんねえからな。リーゼンがいじめられてた。僕は必ず助ける。誓うよ。you go protecting boy protect man it feels like that playthrough is really quick I feel like I just did this we were just making fun of this scene
So in the near future, uh, look forward to the the stage four navigator Naira Sav. Stick in the next showcase. Uh, and uh, that should be pretty cool to show off. I don't know. I, I would like to have a. Oh, let this play. Yeah, I don't know. I, I thought it would be cool to uh, have a webcam when whenever I show off the twin sticks <clears throat> so that I can actually show... Kindly tell me your name, please. Like, show them in action. Because otherwise, you just kind of have to take our word for it. I don't currently have a webcam, so I'd have to get one. <laughs> Much bulk, very slash. And that's what it's all about. Um, so yeah, if anyone has a webcam they'd like to lend me, send them my way. Hit me up on Twitter. How vulgar! Alright, well that's going to do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed that glimpse at the upcoming bulk slash English localization patch. We are working very hard on this. It's, our pacing has been great. Um, we're, we're currently set for this thing to be done by around the end of September. And um, lots more updates on the way. If you don't follow Sega Saturn Shiro on uh, uh, Twitter, that's S-H-I-R-O. Um, make sure you do because we've been collaborating with them to debut each of these characters and then I'm doing full playthroughs on my channel here uh, so next will be Naira Savage uh, we don't have a date set for the next debut yet but it's got to be pretty soon because um, I mean she's ready to go now it's really I think at this point just up to us uh, aligning our schedules then uh, We've, we've also got Kina recorded, um, and uh, Lyra is also, she was implemented as of today. So lots more on the way. Look forward to that. Uh, yeah, Sega Shiro, Sega Shiro on YouTube. Super Retro Heart, great to hear from you. Thanks for hanging out this whole time. And uh, yeah, I just, it's been really uh, a great thing to be a part of I couldn't be happier with how it's going Edo Bean who provided the voice acting for uh, Leone who we saw today um, thank you so much for lending your talents everybody show some love to Edo Bean uh, she's over on Twitter at underscore Edo Bean put that in the chat um and if you've got something that needs voice acting, maybe reach out because Edo Bean was talking about wanting to do more projects in the future. Um, so uh, I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, and yep, keep, keep an eye on my Twitter as well for any future updates about this here project. Or if you just love irreverent tweets about video games that no one's heard of, uh, impenetrable jokes, <laughs> I do it all. Alright guys, thanks so much. Have yourselves a lovely night.